Hello, I'm thinking of permanently moving over to Dorico as my notation software, and let me explain why. Now, I have been an avid user of Sibelius since probably the beginning of my composition journey. In secondary school, that is what we used. Moving on to my degree, I ended up buying it and using it out through that entire process. But there's always been this little gap uh, between notation software and a DAW, at least for me, uh, because notation software, I love Sibelius, I love writing my music in it, it's beautiful, you get this beautiful printout that you can send off to performers, but then I had that awkward transition where I had to learn how to use a DAW and work with MIDI and all that little bits and bobs, and I kind of wished I had discovered, in all honesty, Dorico, because it fixes that little middle gap between a notation software and a DAW. Now really, a DAW, uh, the added perk is the fact that you can record as well as work with MIDI. But what if you don't want to record, you just want your compositions to sound great and you're coming from a notation background and you still want your scores for performers but you still want your scores to sound kind of good but can't be bothered to really buy another piece of software or learn a new piece of software uh, to make them sound even better than you can with the playbacks. Well that's kind of where Dorico comes in. It has this amazing feature that's probably been with Dorico since the dawn of time and I'm only just discovering it, don't ask why, where it kind of incorporates that MIDI and MIDI data, and you can add CC stuff, into this beautiful piece of notation software where you can have the best of both worlds. So let's jump in and show you how this all works. Now, what prompted this was the fact that Dorico 5 came out recently, and in a lot of the videos I do, Dorico has been mentioned, and of course with Note Performer, was it 4 that's just come out, it works within Dorico as well, although, I wouldn't use Note Performer in Dorico, and again, that's something I will explain within this video. We're rambling. This is Dorico 5. Now, we will specifically be using Dorico SE for this video. You'll probably see one in the future where I actually get probably Dorico Pro. Maybe we'll see. That's 500 quid. That's quite a big investment. Um, but. This is my start of my journey, at least with Dorico, and I love it. Now, you're probably wondering, if you're new to all this, what's the difference between all these pieces of software? From SE to Elements to Pro. Now, of course, Elements is free, which comes with its disadvantages. You can only have up to eight players on your score. That's the main disadvantage. There's other things, and honestly, beautiful website. You can do a whole comparison right here and look at what you get, what you don't get, uh, with all the different pieces of software. Honestly, they're so transparent. It's a really solid piece of software. Come on, these are, this is Steinberg. These, this is the makers of the DAW Cubase. So it's a very solid package uh, and very well thought out. Works on Mac and Windows very nicely. But this is what we're going to be using here. Kind of the beginning of people's journeys will be with this. Fast and easy to use, free for ever, which is nice to see, and I think we will be comparing this actually with Sibelius uh, first, I think, because that's free as well, but honestly, this one feature just puts it above everything else, and it's why I'm calling it, I think, the best notation software, especially if you're wanting to create mock-ups. Anyway, you can read this paperwork at your own leisure. We're going to jump into Dorico itself, which is this beautiful piece of software here. So, this score I've actually exported from Sibelius using music XML music, music XML, one of those little things, and imported it, and it did so perfectly, in all honesty, look at it. The only thing it didn't quite get, as you can probably see, is the text bit here, but that's probably going to be an easy fix, and uh, the tempo was well at the beginning, it kind of put it to 120, and it was 75, so I don't know what missed in translation, um, but hey-ho, the rest worked honestly excellent. And it's got that familiar layout of, you've got all your notation, there's stuff with chords, what's really cool, I don't know if it's a new feature, but they mentioned it, is the fact that if I want to drag this, it tells you where you can put it, it's very transparent, you have this live aspect to it, and of course working with chords, bits there, 
you've got all your other little bits and bobs that you're going to use over here. Of course, I'm using the SE version, so I'm a little bit limited, but Honestly, if you're from a MuseScore background, if you're from a Sibelius background, if you've used any notation software before, it's very self-explanatory on this right page, very easy to use. I've had no problems whatsoever, and I absolutely love it. And now this is where the cool bit starts, and you can do it on this page, or you can go over to the play page, but we just pop up this bit here. There's a number of different things you can do. Obviously, you've got the beautiful keyboard, which is easy and accessible down there. You have a guitar thread, a threadboard. So if you're composing for a guitar, you have that beautiful thing there at your fingertips. But also your mixer, which for some reason, it always starts it off at like minus six. That could just be me, but I'm going to stick that to zero. And then we have this gorgeous thing, MIDI which is great if you're starting out and you're used to notation um, because, you know, this, you can write your score, but then it, of course, translates it all into this beautiful thing in MIDI. And you can already see here the velocity and the way it works there. And you can add automations for other CCs. If you click on that, you've got the whole CC range there, 100, up to 127, and you can edit it 0 to 127. Mini CC, and we'll get into why that's so cool and important into a second. Oh, and of course, concert pitch, transposed pitch, which is extremely important when scoring, and it's right there at your fingertips at the bottom, as well as the blessed gallery view I love using with big compositions, blah, 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 all the usual bits and bobs you expect to see, and very solid and rigid piece of software. Although saying that I have had it crash, that could just be me in general software, but it was only once or twice, once or twice, that sounds terrible. Um, but I just wanted to be transparent with you about that. Now, I'm gonna jump into the settings. So, preferences. This I love. Now, they make this whole hoo-ha about the fact that you play with, actually, we're not gonna go into the settings, I'm rambling, but that's because it's cool. I'm gonna click on the play button, which for those who work within DAWs will be very familiar with this screen. And this is why I'm getting so excited about this because you can essentially use this as a DAW or a transition between the write and play. And some of you are probably saying, well, Logic Pro X has this. Not to this extent. You can't create beautiful scores, I feel like this, as easily on Logic Pro X as you can within Dorica. And you can add video to this as well. You can stick a video in and it actually works. I know you can do that in Sibelius, but I hate that. It doesn't work properly. It's laggy, it's weird. Anyway, we're rambling. What am I doing? Mixer, uh, there is a mixer button up here as well. Um, hey, how? So sounds, they make this whole thing about HA, Lion, Sonic, but you can change this. You don't have to use HA, a Sonic thingy to bob. You can go into the settings and use sample libraries and program MIDI CC C, MIDI CC. I did a whole thing on MuseScore 4 and using uh, external virtual instruments within it. And the biggest problem was you couldn't control the nitty gritty aspects of the samples. Well, you can in Dorico and in Dorico SE, which is free. Have I mentioned that? <laughs> right, Dorico, let's go back into the preferences. We're all over the place, it's great. Um, VSTs, here we are. So as you can see, you've got all your blocked plugins. Everything starts off as blocked. You really do have to go into Dorico, preferences, VST plugins, and either just allow all or pick specific ones. Of course, I've picked the ones you can see on the screen. I could probably add more. Actually, I do want to add a contact. Uh, so that will be here somewhere. Stand by. And I do want to add ozone. I should just allow all, but then it just clogs up the screen. Where is contact? Well, they've got complete control, so we'll add complete control and just use everything from there. Weird. Right, apply. Close. So, we've gone from the right to the play. And now we're looking at, well, I'll just stick down here to MIDI for now. Little buttons here. Very intuitive honestly moving over i'm surprised how quickly i am adjusting to everything it feels very familiar i don't know it's because i've just worked in so many pieces of software now that it's all just meshing and 
it's not too hard. Anyway, so we are going to go over here. Uh, if we go to VST and MIDI, uh, we're going to change this. We don't want Harry on Sonic. We want Spitfire Audio because this is a piano. And for some reason, it goes synth, and then you have to pick your specific instrument. But this is how the HA Halion, is that how they say Halion Sonic? I don't know. I'm probably roughing things up. And this is how it sounds. If we just press play. So pretty basic, that's your basic sound, that's great, your everyday stuff for writing, it's a piano, can't go wrong, but then if I actually want to maybe export it and make it sound even better, we go in here, I'm going to use Spitfire Audio, uh, you go Synth, now of course you can use Labs, Labs is completely free, and why not, let's just keep this video free, uh, and it will load up the plugin separately, here we go, and we can go into Pianos, and we can go Soft Piano and we can exit off of that, we can go and now press play. Look how smooth and easy that was as well, it wasn't hard at all, loaded very quickly, and now you have this beautiful notation software playing the lab's piano. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and so you have this awesome sound, and going a step further, if we go back to the play, let's stop that, if we can go in and we'll go back to Spitfire Audio, for some reason synth, and I want to use the felt piano. Quick, easy, loads at the tip of your fingers, and voila! And of course, because we have this hybrid DAW sort of style, let's have a look. So we've got different MIDI's, we've got MIDI 11 there, we've got MIDI CC1 there. If we actually go and pause that, go into this, go into our MIDI here, make this actually a workable size, of course, we've got velocity down here, automations. I'm going to do CC1 right there. We can now go in and write, right click, you can get your pencil, you can do a line, number of different things. So right click on your mouse. So we can do that, or you can do it with a pencil and do crazy stuff. And it will overwrite, of course, what you've previously done. Now, so we've done that, we've done our MIDI, and of course, this doesn't appear on the score. So you're not interfering with what you're going to give to your performer. You're just programming stuff in the background, stuff you don't see. So you don't have to worry about adding stuff onto the score to make it sound how you want, but then the performers aren't going to see that. Uh, but you can make it sound great and still have a score. So if we now uh, click E so we can see our instrument. And let me, well, actually, this, this is probably going to, jump so we should probably do that so click E again and press play probably take that off the screen for a second and you can see MIDI CC working which is awesome <laughs> and yeah of course Actually, I really like the fact that you can right click and it gives you all the tools as long as you hold the mouse down and you can select what you want to use pencil. I really love that feature Dorico. It feels so solid. It feels so well thought out. It's obviously had years and years in the making. And if I could go back, I wish I had discovered Dorico at the beginning, even just the SE, because when I started out, I wasn't composing huge orchestral templates and eight players is enough. You can do a string quartet um, with that. Uh, or even, you know, sections, it's, eight isn't a limitation, and of course this is free, a great place to start, and Elements is only 85, and I th 85 pounds, and I think you can have up to 24 players as well, so this is just such an amazing piece of software, and a great transition for those who maybe started on the more traditional route of writing compositions, and then want to dive into making your composition sound even more even more better, even better. I think that's how you say it. And you can buy some of the originals from Spitfire Audio. You can use, as I said, the free lab stuff and download that just to put your toes in, but not have to worry about using a new piece of software. 
you can make your composition sound great and make it look good for performers at the same time. And that is why I love Dorico. And I think it's a step above things like Sibelius and MuseScore because you have this, you have this, not including everything else and probably the new stuff that's with Dorico 5, which I have no idea. I've looked at it, but I've never used Dorico really before. So to me, I don't know. Uh, I know this is a whole new thing about uh, spatial placing as well. And I tried looking for it and I couldn't really find it. Uh, I don't know if it's in the SE version. I think it is, but that's a different video. This is just why this is awesome. And now I'm rambling, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, there's definitely going to be some more videos featuring Dorico. Before I say my goodbye, I will show you actually how to change it the, into Note Performer. So back into the preferences, play. Uh, at the moment, we're at HSSE, HSSE for SE, but you can see right there is Note Performer as well. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.